So today, I'm going to pick up on a walk I did uh, a couple of years ago, where I walked from the, along the Thames from Waterloo to Putney. And I finished at St Mary's Putney, just over there. So today I'm going to pick up from there and keep going west. Who knows where I'll end up, I've no idea. But it'll be interesting to see. At this part of the Thames, you can walk on either the north or the south bank. Certainly for quite a way anyway. But I think I'm going to walk on the south part of the Thames and the south bank, certainly to start with anyway. Let's uh, see later on. It's tempting to go through the grounds of Fulham Palace down there, which is a really, really wonderful location. I went there a couple of years ago for a, a music festival organised by um, Caught by the River, the wonderful website, blog, publishing kind of house. Um, they put on a, an amazing festival there. And this is looking in the direction I'll be walking towards Barnes. We'll certainly get to Richmond today, but I don't know how much further we'll get, because it's quite late, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. That's the historic St Mary's Church, Putney, where I finished uh, the previous walk along the Thames West, famous for its role in helping to decide the future of England following the English Civil War, where the Putney debates took place. There's more about that in the other video. Down on the riverside path there. Apparently it does have a few decent looking pubs that sit right near the river. That's the Duke's head over there. I don't know what it's actually like, but it looks quite enticing. Well, this is where the Thames is a place of active boating. Comes alive along here, you've got marine supplies and, and uh, boat houses all along this part of the Thames at Putney. Quite a substantial slipway here, leading down to the water for the rowing clubs. The rower just heading out there. These rowing clubs are really quite impressive, aren't they? I imagine they're a great place to have a drink after a day on the water as well. I sound like I'm obsessed with pubs and drinking by the water, don't I? I actually walked along here as far as uh, Barnes Bridge with my great mate Andy Ross. My old uh, City Poly roommate, songwriting partner back in a long time ago. <laughs> and it was really lovely, but it was freezing cold. It's very different to be walking along here now. I mean, actually, in some ways, it was great to be walking along here in that weather. But we missed the wetland centre. It was already locked up, so it was already dark. That was a really great walk. Thanks to Andy for showing me this stretch of the Thames. Craven Cottage. Home of Fulham Football Club. Sadly got relegated this year, so they'll be uh, hosting championship football over there next season. What an amazing location for a, for a football ground though. There's this little bridge here, it's called the Beverly Brook Bridge. So this, I'm guessing, is the Beverly Brook. Where it makes its confluence with the Thames, and I think from here, I think it runs underwater quite a bit. Of course, Beverly Brook is one of the key characters in the Rivers of London books by Ben Aronovich. That's what I can think of. Quite a brilliant character in those books. So this is the, the, the Beverly Brook Walk. Here we are here at the beginning of it, or the end. And it looks really great. It cuts across Richmond Park, which I was aware of, and then it cuts across the edge of Wimbledon Common, where I was in early February, and heads onwards down to New Malden. That's one for another day, isn't it? Lots 
of choices here. I am tempted by the London Wetlands Centre. Uh, I haven't been there for a number of years. I went there, God, 20 years ago. Or do I still, I'm, going to stick to the, I'm going to stick to the river. Yes. This is a really beautiful section of the path. through the trees here beside the river but a temple to what I hear you ask let's go and find out so this incredible temple like building is actually the old Harrods furniture depository where they stored the furniture for the, the world famous Harrods store an incredible building obviously now it's uh, luxury apartments So I guess this must have been the wharf for the Harrods Furniture Depository where they shipped the furniture down the river to the Harrods store. Well, massive new development along the river bank there on the other side at Hammersmith. They're developing all along the Thames, all through London. This is a good view of the majestic Hammersmith Bridge. One of the grandest bridges on the River Thames, which I believe has recently been closed to traffic because of structure engineering works. In fact, actually it looks as though it still might be closed to traffic. Can't see any cars going over the bridge. Yeah, so it is still closed to traffic. And not to cyclists and pedestrians, of course. So yes, I did start talking about Riverside Boozers. That is one of the finest stretches of Riverside Boozers, I think, along the Thames in London. Obviously you'd have your own opinions on this, but there's three or four along here. Hammersmith that are really great pubs in the summer particularly. And of course if you carry on along the river you've got the Fuller's Brewery. Just a little bit further down here. Peace and calm of the riverbank. When I walked along the north side of the river, over there in the winter with Andy, that whole bit of the uh, footpath was flooded. You had to take a big detour to get around it, all the way up to the fronts of those houses. So you can see we're going around a big bend in the river here. Hammersmith and Chiswick, Ravenscourt Park on the other side. Let's see, we're going to work our way down here to another big bend around Mortlake and on to Kew Gardens. There's a lot of uh, rowing activity in the river today, so my uh, pretty much in my entire walk has been narrated by someone through one of those uh, loud hailers there directing, I think they're children rowing on the river. That has been the sound of this walk so far. So I'm passing through barns now, albeit on this path here it looks very similar to uh, the other parts of the riverbank, but Barnes is uh, it's kind of a peculiar place. It's really beautiful, but slightly sort of anomalous. You know, it's stuck out on this bit of the Thames that juts out into the river and it feels like a little village, a little enclosed community. It's obviously a very sort of wealthy area. But uh, yeah, like a little bit of a village stranded in, out in the Thames. I feel like I should be waxing lyrically about the significance of the Thames and what it means to London reciting big chunks of Peter Ackroyd's book about the Thames that I haven't read. 
It doesn't really feel necessary, does it? I think everyone knows how important the Thames is. How it is the giver of life to London. So here's a bit of a taste of Barnes. I woke up in Barnes once, about 20 odd years ago, and it really uh, freaks me out a little bit. A couple of really nice looking pubs here with balconies overlooking the river, the Bull's Head, and the Waterman's Arms. Waterman's Arms is clearly the more popular of the two, but it looks a bit. I don't think I can resist a little look down Barnes High Street. It's definitely got a kind of almost uh, seaside vibe to it. Yeah. Well, Tanya's chippy over there is looking quite enticing. This is Barnes Green. Really lovely. I feel like I deserve a medal for resisting the uh, Numerous pubs along Barnes High Street and Tanya's Chippy have emerged unscathed back to the river path. Bloody hell, Gustav Holst lived there. The great composer. The laneways of Barnes. Barnes Bridge. Another quite impressive structure. So the Thames path takes you underneath the great iron structure, Barnes Bridge. On uh, a couple of previous walks along the Thames, actually when I've been walking with other people, once with uh, Ian Sinclair and then once with uh, the brilliant artist Bob and Roberta Smith when we were making a film down there at, um, down in Battersea, on at least two occasions we met groups of people with backpacks on who were walking the entire Thames path, and I thought I might meet a few today, but so far, nothing. And the remnants of some grand, big old structure here. I have to look it up when I get home. You can see that there was once access to a wharf or a slipway here, look, you've got some metal tracks in the cobblestones that lead up to here, possibly a power station, I guess. Interesting, Stag Brewery, this is there. And then here, Budweiser. King of beers, never has a tagline been so misused. The ship pub, and yet again I am going to resist temptation. I've hardly covered any distance at all so far today. Yeah, this is Moor Lake, and there's Chiswick Bridge up ahead. Sort of large, imposing building through there. I think that is the National Archives. Very significant building. So I guess this is Kew Bridge. So I believe that over there is Oliver's Island. There are a few islands in the Thames. This appeal to me for these kind of river path walks like this, like the Thames path, is the lack of navigation, clearly. So you can kind of switch off a little bit and just let yourself go. The downside to that, I guess, is that parts of the Thames can become a little bit monotonous, actually. Uh, as odd as that sounds, it is beautiful the whole way. Maybe that's it. <laughs> it's also beautiful. But psychologically, you could just allow your mind to go, really. I'm going to go down Ferry Lane for a quick gander at Kew Gardens. I don't want to get too drawn astray, but I think it's got to be well worth it, eh? 
This is the uh, cricket pitch at Kew Green. All very picturesque. So I think this is the Elizabeth Gate. And it really is quite a grand entrance, isn't it? Not if you have to pay to go into this part. It's a possibility, I guess, isn't it? Well, I was actually looking for a cup of tea, but it seems as if I'll have to go in the crickets. Well, that ended up being longer away, <laughs> longer away from the river than I had intended, but uh, I didn't go through Kew Gardens because you, you have to pay something like 18 quid to go in, and it was going to close in 25 minutes. That didn't seem like very good value. I needed a, a rest. I wanted a cup of tea, but I set up for a pint of bitter, which was lovely. So now, onwards. I don't know, well, I've got, got about two hours of daylight. It's 6.30 p.m. now. I'm not on top form today, as you may have noticed, because I've had a cold recently, a really bad, heavy cold, which I'm just on the other side of, but a little bit, you know, not, I'm not on the top of my game. So whether I'll make it past Richmond or not, I don't know, but let's just enjoy the last two hours of glorious sunlight along the Thames. It's quite a majestic building. I guess that must be Kew Palace. And on the other side of the river there, we have Sion Park and House. cluster of boats over there. The pier, I think that's St Margaret's or between Isleworth and St Margaret's. It's quite a lovely sight isn't it? Coming into Richmond now. This is the sluice here beneath, I think is it the footbridge? The Richmond Bridge is just beyond it there. When the tide turns here, that river can become quite furious. This was explained to me once by a Thames waterman. I did some filming with on the Thames for a couple of days. We did one scene down here with Larry Lamb in a rowing boat. He warned me of the dangers of not being out of the river before the tide turned. that I went into at the end of my Patrick Keeler walk on a sort of November day. There's hardly anyone there then. Look at it now. It's like a festival. Well, this feels like a decent end to the walk. Down by the water at Richmond. It's been a good one. About 12 miles. Beautiful weather. Fantastic company. Thanks for coming with me on that glorious walk along the Thames path from Putney Bridge to Richmond. I'm just going to sit on this bench here for a little bit actually, just enjoy the evening sunshine and then uh, meander home. I'll we'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.